You've been real nice. I had a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Sagan, huh? All right. Very good, very good, Bob. Very good, baby. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 289, it's our first show of 2022, I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. That's right, so, happy new year everybody. Uh, We didn't do a show last week, because last week was... Maybe the worst week of my life. <laughs> it was up there. It was up yeah. there. But before I did any work, I watched 29 hours of wrestling last week. Before I did any work, just <laughs> watching the shows took 29 hours. So, like, I realized we're completely you're like you're planning, you work for a wrestling website and you have to work on wrestling. <laughs> Trust me, it's not, it's not digging ditches. It's not breaking rocks in the hot, hot sun. It doesn't really feel like work. At the same time, you only have so many hours in a day and you only have so many hours in a week. And when 30 of them are taken up before you start doing anything, that's a problem. So last week, pretty busy. New Japan ran three five hour shows. We never need that again. <laughs> never, 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 never need that again. Uh, AEW, they are in the uh, the content is king. Uh, era now as they have a battle of belt special that they added just you know all the all the content last week how much content did you consume last week buddy uh so i watched the the top matches i i brian alvarez it on the on the wrestle king the first two nights of wrestle kingdom i did watch dynamite and i think i watched rampage um and i watched the last two matches of battle of the belts and then of course this week's parts of raw and parts of dynamite as well so <laughs> uh yeah that's that that is that is plenty just for me and we we've discussed this in the past i think on and off the air you have to wonder like i guess there's a percentage of people that just this is all they care about this is all they do for their leisure <laughs> is just watch different professional wrestling companies it's like, don't you like sports or cartoons or or anything? Or at least at the very least, don't you have to eat <laughs> and sleep <laughs> or go to work? <laughs> like I think I think well, as you as you kind of allude to there, I think there's a, a, a portion of fans, and it may only be you know seven hundred thousand of them or something, but this is their interests and every night between eight and 11 they if they work they come home from work they eat dinner they watch wrestling from 7 to 11 or 8 to 11 or whatever wrestling's on and that's and then they go to bed and that's it they don't like sports they don't like anything else they don't watch any other tv like it's it's Mm -hmm. and that's their entertainment and I think that number is shrinking, but you know, kind of thank God that number is there. It's the only thing keeping the wrestling business alive. But <laughs> the uh, the the hyper consumer, as you will, you're not you're not necessarily trying to cast the widest net possible. You're just trying to keep the ones that are still invested, like super invested. Right. You know, we can. This could become a much bigger conversation about ratings and such, but that reminds me. So Rod did like you know. They do their 1.5, 1.6 million viewers, whatever it is, every week. We never get the DVR numbers. We get the the next day numbers, which is the live uh, same day, live and same day viewing. We rarely, if ever, get the plus seven, which would tell you how many people are, are watching on DVR. How many people do you think? Is it double the, you know, is it three million people that are watching Raw every week? Is it, you know, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you would think it's got to be like, like two, two and a half mil. Like if combined, like with with that, you would have to think it's it's that it's that many. And obviously, a lot of people are 
consuming the product through clips and gifts and stuff too. So like there's more, I think there's more than that, but yeah, as far as the people that are actually watching it on that DVR plus seven, you have to imagine if it's that, that has to be, that would at least explain the more stark drop off, right. Where in like right. four years, we've gone from, from 3 million to one and a half million. Like I, like, yeah, I'm sure there is a percentage of people that just aren't watching it all anymore, but not like that. That would be much. If we looked at the the plus seven numbers, I think you would find a lot. That number is not maybe as astronomically smaller as it, it can sometimes appear. Well, as we've gone on one of our trademark tangents here, I'll try to <laughs> reel us back in and we'll go chronologically here. New Japan last week. Wrestle Kingdom shows the big direction coming out of Wrestle Kingdom is Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito. Not lighting my world on fire, but hey, Okada is the champion again. He's the champion as they celebrate their 50th anniversary. And I thought that was predictable, not necessarily bad because he's probably the greatest wrestler to ever live. But Mm -hmm. uh, I was not blown away by Wrestle Kingdom long 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 shows and three nights of them uh, what you think of those shows and uh what stood out to you yeah the uh as uh who's it ross berman refers to him the boy king of new japan kazuchika yes. okada is is once yes. again on his throne and yes. uh yeah the i it's always he's always like a safe guy right he's the this like much like it was a safe bet to bet that John Cena or Triple H or someone like that would would get the belt again at some point. It's always a safe belt uh, bet to assume that Kazushiko Okada is eventually going to be the world champion in New Japan again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I liked the match with Shingo. I liked the match with Osprey a lot. I, I really, really liked the Osprey match. Um, um, those guys are just made for each other, I think. Um, and... <laughs> Like it, like I, I, I think that 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 was a great, great main event. Um, it's a little watered down though, because when you watch that, and and we'll get to AEW and other things in a minute, but it's it is like, well, I watched Okada and Osprey after I had watched Okada versus Shingo and Tanahashi versus Kenta had this wild hardcore thing and all this other stuff, and then you watch AEW and you watch the Hangman and Danielson match, and then you watch Okada and osprey and i'm like i think that was maybe the first or second best match i saw this week like maybe <laughs> like like it, it's just it was just it just i think it, it kind of all starts to blend together and like what was on what night and and all of that i mean the probably from an emotional standpoint um shibata coming back is is was cool and him allegedly changing <laughs> changing plans <laughs> as a shoot and having a real wrestling match, which I will see. Well, history, mm. history will maybe prove that story to be a little less true or perhaps mm. lost in translation, but, <laughs> um, but uh, yes, Shib- Shibata whose brain fell out of his head or something. And, and then uh, it's like his yeah. brain out and put it back in. <laughs> Hang on. Right. I need to, right. Hang on. I need to go on a tangent about this. So, I had to, I was charged with uh, writing up that Katsuyori Katsuyori Shibata had allegedly uh, gone off script at Wrestle Kingdom Mm -hmm. because Dave Meltzer from uh, Wrestling Observer F4W Online said on a radio show that 100%, absolutely no one, well, maybe a few people, but no one knew, (laughs) absolutely. that Shibata was going to go out there and change the rules. And it's like, I am, I am incredibly skeptical of that just because, you know, just because. <laughs> <laughs> well, but when he says maybe came a this... few people wouldn't, you would think Gato would be one of those people then, right? <laughs> um, you'd think the booker would know. Yeah. I mean, he claimed, he claimed on, he claimed on the podcast that they, that Gato did not know, but I don't know. I I was skeptical of that. I think, yes, between things getting lost in translation and maybe the English speaking sources that Dave has in New Japan are really dumb people. (laughs) (laughs) If you can read between the lines there. 
maybe they're just like some of the dumbest guys to ever walk the face of the earth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, maybe some things get lost in translation there, sure. Uh, but he, I mean, he also reported in the Wrestling Observer newsletter last week that <laughs> Katsuhiro Shibata had a surgery where they took his brain out and put it back in. <laughs> 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 One of, the, one of the greatest things I ever read. <laughs> oh, it's like, look, man. last week, last week almost killed a lot of us. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. That's true. Yes. But uh, regardless uh, <laughs> of, of, of brains coming in and out and plans being changed or people going into yeah. business for themselves or whatever, whatever the heck happened, uh, Shibata coming back is probably what I would argue is the most memorable thing other than maybe Kenta almost dying by falling off a ladder and landing head first on a trash can. That oh might, my lord. That might be the most memorable single spot uh for, from that from that show. But yeah, Shibata coming back, you put Okada back on the throne. He talked about wanting to stand side by side with Anoki, who wasn't Anoki having like some really bad health problems. Yeah. So he did a video message for um I forget which night of Wrestle Kingdom, but he did film a video message mm-hmm. and I guess he was in, in better shape than he has been. But he came to a show a couple of years ago and uh, the best that they could do uh, this year so far is have him shoot a video. So I don't know. He wants he he it would be a nice story, um, even if Inoki is not a nice or a good man. Uh, he's the <laughs> biggest he's the second biggest star in the history of Japanese wrestling. And it would be nice if he could show up this year yeah uh to your point not a super exciting like creative direction coming out yeah. of the show uh Tetsu- tetsuya naito is uh challenging okada next uh, i will just mention uh mr naito and jeff cobb had a match on night two and i would like to institute the the twl award uh for it's not for the best match it's not for the worst match it's for a pretty solid match that you had a nice time watching I'm giving the ah. pretty solid match that I had a nice time watching award to Tetsa Naito versus uh, versus Jeff Cobb from I think that was night two. Um, sure. But uh, whatever <laughs> night it happened on, I think it was night two. I'll take your uh, word for it. Just a nice match. Big power guy wrestles the veteran. The veteran works over his leg. Eventually the leg gives out. The veteran wins. Like they'll probably rematch in the G1 or something later this year. Uh, good. It was good and it was nice. So I just wanted to make mention that I had a good, nice time watching that match and give them a nice little award for it. It's the first time. I mean, if there's a plus, it's the first time in a while that they're going to give Naito something he can stick his teeth into. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe he'll he'll work a different match than just repeatedly elbowing the guy in the back of the neck. <laughs> and uh then and then hitting this you know like you know it's a good it, it's um a psych- psychologically sound style that he works mm-hmm. but his body is just thrashed and he has a lot of the same matches and i don't think physically he's anywhere near what he used to be so we'll see what he has we'll see what he has with okada mm-hmm yeah, definitely. Like you understood why they moved him into a tag role last year. Like, oh yeah, he was, and obviously he ended up missing the G one and stuff last year. So it's it's not his body is not getting more healthy <laughs> as no. these, these never ending tours go on. You brought up Kenta and Tanahashi from Wrestle Kingdom. So Kenta fell off, <laughs> fell off like a twelve foot ladder, <laughs> and he he broke his fall with his face hitting a trash can. <laughs> and it's like, so they, they worked, they had a ladder match in uh, like in the middle of 2021, it was Tai Chi against Tamatanga. Mm-hmm. And they had like these shoot aluminum ladders. Like remember our, we had a grandfather who used to work at a shipyard. And uh, when he retired from the shipyard, he bought, a, he just brought a bunch of stuff home. <laughs> with him from the shipyard and one of those stuff is like this heavy aluminum ladder that was in his backyard forever mm-hmm. those are the kind of ladders that they used in new japan <laughs> it was not like the um i don't know what wwe uses fiberglass or anyway regardless uh wood sometimes sometimes it's, it's a heavy aluminum ladder whatever but anyway these were super hard thick 
uh, ladders that New Japan was using when they did a ladder match a few months ago. And just absolutely brutal to try to take bumps with and um, just really, really tough. So anyway, this year, uh, a few months later here at Wrestle Kingdom, they decided that they were going to use softer and safer ladders. I would like to think because I took them to task for using (laughs) like the (laughs) hardest ladders you could find. But maybe they just listened to people who were like in the match and said, hey, man, you got to get some you got to get some good work in ladders. Right. But anyway, regardless. So they they got the they come out with the lightest, flimsiest ladders ever for this Kenta and Tanahashi match. And Kenta goes up to the top of a 12 foot ladder and Tanahashi starts tilt, pushing the ladder over. And there's no one, no referee there to hold the ladder steady. Like sometimes you see in a WWE mat, ladder match or mm-hmm. anyway, Kenta starts falling towards the top rope. And I'm like, what is his plan here? Like, I think, I think maybe he's going to try to like crotch himself on the top rope. Like, I think that's what he's going for here, mm-hmm. but the angle was weird. And like, the, the, he fell at a weird angle anyway. Yeah. So he broke his fall with his face hitting a trash can. He like dislocated his hip. <laughs> he had some really terrible injuries. His, yeah. his face was all messed up. It, it was bleeding like, everywhere. Yeah absolutely horrible horrible <laughs> like, like was, they need there's something they need to take from wwe's book it's how to do gimmick matches yes like <laughs> this is that was yeah i was thinking when he, when they're tipping it over it's like okay he's gonna do the thing where he kind of jumps off the last second lands on his feet and like pretends to neck himself across the top rope and you know and then falls back or whatever it's like and then he keeps and then it keeps tipping <laughs> and he's still on the ladder and he's looking yep. down and you're like, uh, <laughs> is he going to do something? And then he lets go and he just falls face first onto the trash can. <laughs> and then he bled as much as any human man has ever bled. <laughs> like, uh, yep. Yeah, that was wild. And fascinatingly, on the other side of this is that the finish is then Tanahashi puts him on one <laughs> of those horrible New Japan tables that like permanently yes. scarred Kota Ibushi and Cody Rhodes a couple of years ago. And yes. uh and he's going to do the high five flow off the ladder. He barely makes it off the ladder without it tipping over. And yes. then he, the way he lands was fascinating to me. He like, he lands completely chest and like torso first on Kenta. So Kenta takes all the weight, <laughs> this poor man uh, crashes through the table. And then as he's kind of leaning over, he puts his hands out so that his head doesn't smack into the canvas. <laughs> It was like, I don't know how he managed to do that without his knees touching the ground, but he did. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you, you take you take the legs and the and the the arms away from Tanahashi and he's still the best torso in <laughs> in wrestling. Uh, but but yeah, that was yep. a fascinating and very hard. Like, yeah, you got to get like somebody one better props and two, like somebody that can put that match together with the competitors so that they yes. don't just land face first on a, on a trash can. Yes. Yeah. I've de- I'm, de- it's, I'm definitely going to remember that match, but I've never really seen anything like it. And like, if you were to start a list of people that would need gimmicks like that to have mm-hmm. a good match, like Kenta and Tanahashi, we pretty far down the list. I was going to say and that. Yet they, yeah, that is part of the novelty. It's like, okay, Tanahashi, one of the greatest professional wrestlers in the history of the world. And Kenta, like, at, at the very least, one of the greatest Japanese wrestlers of the 2000s. And they're doing, like, what you might expect to see on, like, some, like, Midwest indie show. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. like deathmatch yeah. stuff or, you know, with, like, trash cans and kendo sticks and falling off flimsy ladders. Jeez, what is going on? Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, they they had a pretty good regular match a few months ago, like six months ago. Mm-hmm. So I guess they just wanted to do something different, and they they sure did that. <laughs> uh, WWE gearing up for the Royal Rumble. They have pre-announced a bunch of the uh, women's legends, the Trailblazers from the past, who will be coming back for the Royal Rumble. Kelly Kelly, Lita etc etc michelle mccool the bellas 
Um, and then a handful of dudes they've announced for the Royal Rumble, but uh, we're on the road to the Royal Rumble and we're telling some stories. We got a mixed tag <laughs> program going. We got uh, Roman and, uh, and Brock Lesnar is certainly appears to be the WrestleMania direction. And I'm actually excited to see that match. I don't know how they did it, but they got me excited <laughs> and, and, and invested in seeing Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar wrestle again in the year of our lord 2022 they've done it uh what's your thoughts on uh i guess roman's got seth rollins from raw as a placeholder feud for mm -hmm. now uh what do you think what's uh what's your just general wwe thoughts as we get caught up here yeah i think there's always a little bit of a even when wwe is uh let's say creatively lacking as they have been for the last <laughs> uh two decades or so um like i think the rumble season always feels kind of exciting just because the rumbles are fun and it's really hard to have a bad one like <laughs> and you've got two on the show they announced all these returning people for the for the women's match including by name impact knockouts champion mickey james <laughs> which is right fascinating to me um yeah. uh and yeah, so I like that's gonna be that'll be that'll be a lot of fun having all those returns will be fun. Yeah, the, the I'm a little surprised that they're doing Seth versus Roman now because that feels like one of the very few like big big matches between two full time wrestlers in WWE that they have left to do. I mean, I know they've wrestled before, but it hasn't they haven't in years and not in these like current iterations. Right. So it feels like it would be a really big match for like a SummerSlam or something. I mean, I guess Rumble is still like the second biggest show of the year. So I guess it is fitting for that stage. But a lot of times the Rumble title matches are kind of less than because you're selling it on the Rumble matches themselves. And you need right. I mean, you want all the stars in the Rumble match. So right. I guess that's interesting. So that is interesting to me. So I would be interested to see what they what they would do with that. Um, um I like my in my head, I'm like, well, maybe they're gonna like do a belt swap before Mania. Like maybe Roman's gonna lose to Seth through some Brock interference or something. And then Brock and Roman will be for Brock has the WWE title. Yes. Uh so so maybe the, and that'll be the Roman and Brock feud. And then Seth will take the universal title to Raw and wrestle whoever wins the rumble i guess for for that belt that like i guess that's the most interesting thing it's like okay so how does this shake out if they aren't just going to end up doing like you know title for title or whatever yeah i i think it's interesting that they have some intertwining stories and stuff going on even if it's totally by accident because <laughs> they had to have uh they added brock to that title match because roman got covid and they had to put the the raw title on brock it's like well Okay, now you got the Raw champions feuding with the SmackDown champion, and then a guy from Raw is wrestling the SmackDown guy. It's like, okay, well, I got a reason to watch both shows now. So that's even if it's totally by accident, they kind of lucked into into something good there. I think so. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens there. Uh, Sasha Banks got hurt. Uh, I think she was the WrestleMania program for Charlotte Flair. I'm fairly certain just because by process of elimination, there's like three people on the roster <laughs> and, um, and Tony storm quit and, and went flew home. Uh, she just, she, go. she, she up and quit the day I was going to see her wrestle live for the first time. <laughs> she, she got on a plane and went home <laughs> said, Oh, you want me to go to Baltimore? No, thank you. No, thank you. I will. <laughs> I for one choose quitting the business I, I mean i guess we didn't talk about this because we had two uh evergreen shows taped around the holidays but <laughs> i went to the wwe house show the week after christmas and boy was that show <laughs> Woo! that was a show let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> but yes tony i they were in dc the night before and then they were in baltimore the next night and Whenever they do that, it's like I always think about going to both or I always think about picking D.C. over Baltimore. And it's just like going to D.C. on a weeknight is a hassle. It's like mm -hmm. you're not going to get home until after uh, after midnight and whatever, whatever, whatever. I decide not to go to D.C. The D.C. match was 
Charlotte versus Sasha versus Tony Storm and Sasha Banks and Tony Storm, both of my five favorite wrestlers. And then the next night, Tony Storm quit. <laughs> and so I just got Sasha Banks versus Charlotte Flair in a, in a fun house show match. But yeah, I'm uh, somebody, uh, the, the the diva Bible guy on Twitter is like, you're cursed. And it's like, yes, <laughs> I am in fact cursed. That's, I mean, I don't know how else to explain it because that is... <laughs> I just, I just want to know what happened <laughs> so bad. Like I need a, an 83 weeks podcast, but just about that <laughs> week of her life. Like, I don't really care about so the rest of her career. I just want to hear what happened like that week. And specifically like those three days between when I guess the, her title match with Charlotte aired on SmackDown and she lost or whatever. And then they, she was on a house show loop with them and then just, flew herself home and then called them to say she was quitting <laughs> right so like sunday was tampa monday was i forget like richmond or something tuesday is dc wednesday is baltimore thursday was buffalo and then uh friday was smackdown saturday was day one and it's like okay then you had a few days off but it's the most lucrative house show week of the year and there were two days left in the in the loop or whatever, and she just she just flew home. <laughs> she, she just ghosted them. It's like, wouldn't you just like even if you're like totally fed up and you know they're never going to do anything with you, and you know you're a giant star, and you'll go to any promotion in the world and <laughs> make a lot of money and blah 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 blah. blah. Wouldn't you just work out the last two dates or whatever? <laughs> like, that's the part that's fascinating to me. It's like Baltimore broke her. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened from when she was pinned on the night before in DC to yes. when she was supposed to be getting on her flight to, or, or maybe they were driving, I guess. Maybe, maybe they, I would assume it would be a drive. Yeah. yeah. It's only a hour drive. Right. Or right. So, okay. So, sometime <laughs> between finishing that match in DC. <laughs> And the next morning or afternoon, whenever she decided to fly herself home, she's like, nope, this ain't for me. And <laughs> just got the heck out of there. That's legitimately fascinating. And I just, I want to, I want to hear, I want to hear all the juicy goss about, about this week. I bet we get it at some point. Yeah. I bet we get it at some point. Yeah. But anyway, so Sasha Banks got hurt. I think she was supposed to be Charlotte's uh, WrestleMania program. She still could be. I thought she was going to win the Rumble, but maybe not now. Uh, they gave like an eight-week timeline or something, that she, but some people think that's kayfabe and she actually will be in the Rumble, but mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, I think Becky and Bianca Belair is still a long-term Raw women's title program. Um and so maybe Bianca wins the Rumble again back to back. I don't know. What do you think? So Charlotte is in the Rumble, even though she's the champion. Yes. Yes. Um, well, that makes me hope that she wins because I think that would be very funny. <laughs> um, but if we're talking about things that I would actually like to see, yeah, I guess it's Bianca then because who? <laughs> I guess it could be like whoever eliminates Charlotte then goes on to win the Rumble and challenges her. But again, if that's not, Sasha then it but they still think Sasha will be healthy for mania you probably don't want to tie right. Charlotte to somebody else unless you're going to do like a, a triple threat or whatever I mean it could yeah I mean hey maybe it's fearless Nikki Bella <laughs> maybe it is like I mean maybe it is. they've been doing nothing but booking part-timers and main events for the for the men for the last you know decade or so I like they could yeah. start mixing in some 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 of these uh, legends coming back here for, I mean, Beth's yeah. Beth, Beth, Beth and Maurice to to hall of fame legends <laughs> are, are wrestling on this show anyway. So I could yep. see, I could see one of the, it, a part timer winning it if it's not Bianca. Yeah. So th their reaction to Sasha getting hurt was to announce Charlotte for the rumble. So that told me, okay, well, Sasha's not winning a rumble now, but whoever eliminates Charlotte from the rumble will be her uh, foe on SmackDown, whoever that turns out to be, even if it's for, even if it's just for like a month or whatever. Right. Uh, if Sa if Sasha is going to be healthy. But, and I think Bianca wins the Rumble again on the men's side. No earthly idea. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I no mean, earthly idea. You got to assume it's, I guess, whoever. If they're not doing title for title, uh, right. then you have to assume that it's like, because that was my other thought is like, well, Brock or Roman could lose and then like enter the rumble and win the rumble and challenge the other one. Um, right. But if it's not that, then I, you have, then again, I still have to think then that Seth's winning Roman's belt and it's Big E or whoever they would put with Seth for mania, I guess. I just I don't see Seth Rollins, this version of Seth Rollins beating Roman Reigns. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. I wouldn't do it, but I, I just feel like, yeah, I so maybe. But so, yeah, I, don't I know. think I, I I think Roman screwing Brock out of the WWE title is, uh, is a decent possibility. And then maybe Brock enters the Rumble again and wins it and goes on to wrestle uh yeah, Roman. Yeah, so that seems Lashley, like that well, Yeah, so then Lashley would be your WWE champion, and then he can wrestle, I don't know who. <laughs> I mean, again, it's the like, same three guys, right? It's Rollins, it's Owens, it's Big E. Like, they don't only have- one of those guys is a baby face. I mean, I guess Lashley's half ass a baby face anyway. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a heel, but he's so cool that everybody likes him. <laughs> right. He comes out in a suit and then he beats everybody's ass. <laughs> Right. While so the that guy's getting baby. cheered. <laughs> he's kind of a baby face anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I, I think, I don't know. We've fantasy booked a lot here, but I think that's what I, I think that's what they'll do. I just, don't, like, Roman's had that belt for like 500 days or something. It's yes. like, maybe Brock beats him, but I don't think Seth Rollins beats him at that, at that, you know, who knows? And we're AEW. still holding out. We're still holding out for Dwayne. <laughs> He's totally not going to ghost them next year. <laughs> oh, man. He filmed a video for Ken Shamrock getting inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. He filmed a video for Bret Hart being inducted into the Canada Walk of Fame. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get him to do a video <laughs> for the Survivor Series that they built around him. What? How long <laughs> does it take to like after he works out? And he's, you know, got his chains around his neck or whatever. And he's got his <laughs> his Under Armour T-shirt on and he's sweating more than any human being who's ever sweat in their entire life. <laughs> and he shoots a 30 second promo and says, hey, thanks for building Survivor Series around me. Do you smell what the rocks cook and see you next time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How he must not have wanted to do it. <laughs> like, that's my takeaway from it. But yes, they will. They will. They are just. They will kiss his feet until he shows up <laughs> they'll do branded content for every movie he's in until until he comes yep. back yep yep um yeah so someday we're gonna get roman and Dwayne though like someday we will someday he's gonna decide he doesn't or someday the movies will stop paying him and he'll come back at 55 years old or whatever and he'll do the roman match but yeah so roman might have like a, a bruno run like nine years of the title or whatever <laughs> Why not? Like, sure. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, anyway. no. Even if he loses the belt, nobody's getting pushed higher than Roman Reigns as a full time wrestler in that company. So, might as well have him be the champion. Yeah, I mean the the only thing you got to worry about is the the times the 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 when he turns forty, he's going to do the Cena thing. He got his he got his big piano key teeth, <laughs> and uh, he's going to go he's going to go make movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, like like Cena did when he turns forty. That, that's my my thing. So I think we still got like five years before that happens. I think he's like thirty five, isn't he? Is he thirty five? I think so. Yeah, I think that's right. All right. AEW. Lance Archer feuding with Adam Page. What? <sighs> this this felt this week's AEW Dynamite felt like a COVID show to me, and I don't know. I mean, obviously, we know, obviously we know that um, medical protocols force them to strip Cody Rhodes the TNT title, or institute an interim TNT champion or whatever. They took him off the Battle of the Belt show. Sammy Guevara wrestled Dustin on that show. First time Dustin Rhodes has ever looked old was in that match with Sammy Guevara. <laughs> There's like certain things that he st- that he did that still looks like Dustin Rhodes, 
but he also like couldn't catch his breath and stuff. And it's like, this is the first time Dustin Rhodes has ever looked old when he wrestled uh, Sammy Guevara on that Battle of the Belts show. But regardless, I don't know that Dynamite was a COVID show this week and that a lot of people were seemed unavailable or whatever. But I think, and obviously I'm, I want AEW to succeed. I want Tony Khan to fail miserably. I want AEW <laughs> to succeed, but I thought this is maybe one of the worst dynamites ever this week. What'd you think of the show? Yeah. And it's one of those things where when there isn't like a great wrestling match across the show, like I didn't think any of the wrestling was bad, but there wasn't any great wrestling. And so when there's nothing great on the show, you begin, or at least I personally find myself picking at things that I might have let slide on other weeks. Where it's just sure. like, and this is not a new problem for Dynamite, but the cut and paste nature of the the angles they run, where <laughs> someone comes out to talk or is backstage talking and then gets interrupted and then there's a brawl. You know, like they've done like eight of those on this show. The fact that almost no match ends clean, or if it does have a clean finish, there's an immediate run in and a brawl or or something like that. Like you just you start to pick at that stuff that maybe you let slide on other weeks when, you know, you have something like hangman versus Danielson and speaking of hangman. Yeah. It's like nothing, nothing against Lance Archer. Like I very much enjoy his matches for the most part. It's cool that he like at like 39 figured out how to be a great wrestler. Like yeah. after being kind of like a boring <laughs> tag guy for a lot of his career, like he just suddenly became pretty mid for most of his life. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> and then suddenly it like, 39 he wrestled osprey on that texas show and everyone was like oh my god is, is lance archer good um, he's like 44 now mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so insane. god bless him so I, i'm I'm, yeah. I, I'm and like he's very much seems to have found himself like he's the cane of aew <laughs> and then he's he's kind of when he's healthy he's around and then like once a year they put him into a feud with the world champion and, he, and they book him like a monster for like four weeks and then they have the match and the champion beats him clean and then he's back to kind of just being a guy hanging around. <laughs> and that's what it feels like. I mean, he, in this case, he has actually been away, but but for Hangman going from wrestling ostensibly the top guy in the company and Danielson twice in two incredible matches over the last month and then now being into a feud with the cane of AEW big old downgrade and that's not lance archer's fault necessarily but yeah that does not feel like a strong direction my impression is that the pay-per-view match is him and adam cole so i'm guessing this is just a tv thing for adam page to wrestle and beat someone while while they're waiting to start i guess getting that set up for the pay-per-view in in march or whatever but yeah, as a show, it wasn't that exciting, and your none of your top angles feel like they have some juice. I guess the only thing that felt like it had some juice to me it was the first time Adam Cole and Britt Baker were on television together, and that seemed to get like a really big reaction from the crowd. So that seems like something that people will care about a little bit, but it is in the middle of this like never-ending best friends elite undisputed era feud. So I guess that's a shot in the arm for that a little bit, but. Yeah, overall, not a not a lot of great wrestling. When there's like a Matt Hardy match and then the acclaimed Wrestle Bear Country, you're like, yeah, it feels like some people weren't available for this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much. The matches between uh, the best friends guys and the elite and the elite adjacent undisputed era guys, like the the matches will be really good. Mm -hmm. the the story that they're building where it's obviously going to be the young bucks and kenny against cole fish and o'reilly feels very 2019 aew to me mm. <laughs> it's a lot of guys in their 30s very deeply into their feelings on national tv it's just a it's a young bucks story and i don't care for their stories <laughs> <laughs> i love i love their matches I don't hmm. care for their stories. I think that's fair. Um, I just, I just hope, and we, I discussed this on Twitter this week. I really want a segment <laughs> where a skit where Adam Cole has uh, invites both the Young Bucks and Red Dragon, and we could throw Britt Baker in there too. He invites them all to a dance, 
and he doesn't tell any of the others that he has invited the other ones. And then he has to dance with all of them without the other, like he has to dance with each individual member of Red Dragon, the Young Bucks and Brit without any of the others seeing him dancing with them. That is my ideal. Like you can do that on, I prefer it on Dynamite, but if you could put it on BTE at the very <laughs> least, I think that would be wonderful. I, uh, greatest thing I ever heard. <laughs> uh also, here on Fraser Observer Radio, you just described the plot of every episode of Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, that's why I love Fraser so much, just because that brand of <laughs> zigzag uh, farce humor is my absolute favorite. Uh, but yes, I wholeheartedly endorse that uh, proposal. That's, that's my white whale now. <laughs> it's a sea of skit <laughs> where Adam Cole takes the Young Bucks, Red Dragon, and Britt Baker to a dance and doesn't let the other ones know that the other people are there. <laughs> I'm like very loosely have maybe somebody that I could send a message to. It's like, hey, could you tell <laughs> could you tell these guys to do this on the show? <laughs> like, I've yet to do that. I've yet to like take advantage of any of, <laughs> of my uh, <laughs> what m- connections I may or may not have, but it's like mm-hmm. I'm willing to go to the mat for this one. So I, I'm gonna shoot some I'm gonna shoot some DM. I'm gonna shoot my <laughs> shot <and> some- <laughs> I, I, I we gotta we gotta make this happen. It's like that's the greatest thing I ever heard. <laughs> All right. So this week coming up, uh what do we got? We got raw, we got SmackDown. We got Rampage, yeah, GC- Dynamite, GCW. Yeah, Moxley's gonna be back. I I expected him this week, but he's got to be back like next week because uh, GCW has that show next Sunday. I think. I think it's Sunday night where yes, the they're at. Uh, yeah, we're there at Hammerstein, and it's gonna be on traditional pay per view in addition to being on Fight TV. And they did like a number one contender tournament for their title. And uh, they have yet to announce Moxley for that show, but I would imagine Moxley will be defending the title on that show, which would mean that Moxley's got to show up next Wednesday or next Friday for uh, on Dynamite or Rampage, I would think. Yeah, I would think so. I think they're live for both Wednesday and Friday next week. So yeah, they're in DC both nights. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's a couple opportunities for him to to show up as a surprise or whatever, but. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I think I think as we talked about, he was very clearly, I think, going heel and was probably going to win that tournament and be Hangman's first challenger uh, coming out of coming out of uh, that that last pay-per-view. And then obviously he he had to go away uh, for his personal issues. And it's like this guy comes back now. You can't buff Bagwell this right. Like he's the big he's going to be the biggest baby face. You can't turn him right away. Like, I mean, you can, but I think it would be a mistake, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I would not. I would not do it. Like, I don't I, I don't know if there's a reason that guy ever needs to be a heel. Mm-hmm. It's just like I understand it just for like storytelling reasons why you might want to do it. But like, people aren't going to want to hate Moxley ever, <laughs> I don't think. Well, I mean, I think he is that type of character that like you don't have to make him the the mustache twirling bad guy, right? <laughs> the he's, barbershop window heel. Right. Like he's a big mean man, even when he's a good guy. So you just have him right. be a big mean man to the cowboy that we all like. And then he'll right. and then he'll be, you know, a bad guy adjacent enough for that feud to work. Yeah, that's fine. That would definitely be better than a uh, a Lance Archer, a hangman page feud. <laughs> Although Although, as we said, God bless Lance Archer. Yeah. Fans. Good modern family fans. Man. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable with his motorcycle helmets. <laughs> they do evoke certain imagery. <laughs> yes. But maybe he just... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't understand. <laughs> we give him the benefit of the doubt and mm-hmm. say that he is a good family man. Mm-hmm. Good family all right, uh, prattled on for a long time here. I have anyway. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to get into before we wrap it up? No, I think that just about covers it. There's just there's just so much. And again, being the first and only wrestling podcast, we're the oh. only ones to talk about it. Hang on, hang on. 
I had to watch Impact pay per view last week. Oh. oh my gosh, I had to give Impact forty dollars. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't exactly understand how taxes work, and it's like I know <laughs> I'll be able to write it off, but still, I had to give forty dollars to Impact Wrestling. And uh, Mickey James and Deanna Prazo had a, uh, a, a brawl, uh, hardcore match in the main event. And that if I hadn't seen the freaking bunny <laughs> and <laughs> Penelope Ford and them have like a much better hardcore brawl a week before that, I would have mm-hmm. thought it was a really great match. But Mickey and Deanna had. But boy, do I never want to give Impact $40 for a show <laughs> that has the Good Brothers on it ever again. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. No one. No one should. Uh <laughs> Moose, Moose, and Big Ass in your world title match. Um, Matt Cardona's trunks split. So every time I watch it, every time I have to watch an impact show, somebody either their pants either fall down or they split their pants. And that, that string uh, continued here with Cardona tearing his trunks. There you go. And I, I guess the one last note before we really can get out of here is uh, MLW is trying to sue WWE. <laughs> it's. There's a line, yeah, MLW saying WWE's a monopoly, they're violating antitrust laws, we want to sue them. And in the press release announcing this lawsuit, this grandstand lawsuit, Court Bauer's like, I think I speak for the entire professional wrestling industry. And it's like, mm-hmm. trust me, pal, you don't speak for the entire pro wrestling <laughs> industry. I, trust I, me, you don't. Yeah. I will just say there, I think the specific motions that they're bringing are because they allege that WWE poo-pooed them getting on Tubi, which is apparently a Fox owned, like free streaming channel that you can get on like your Roku or whatever. Um, Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. It wouldn't be the first time WWE made a call like that, but also prove it. (laughs) And There's There's smoke to that fire, but also Court Bauer is such a carny that I can't believe anything he says. And I will just I will make a note that uh, Joey Janela was on Twitter and he mentioned that uh, Court Bauer writes <laughs> no GCW into all of all of MLW's uh, terrible contracts now because Joey was yes. publicly uh, uh, critical <laughs> of of how he felt they MLW took advantage of some younger talent and so now if you sign one of those weird five year no money MLW deals. You also are not allowed to work for the hottest super indie in the country. So good luck to everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Classic. It's now, it's it's not officially a show now until I get to dump on court (laughs) Bauer. That's our new. uh, Yeah. He's in that hall of shame with like, uh, with Mike Elgin and some of the other TWL all-stars. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't doubt that d- someone at who worked at WWE whispered to somebody who works at Fox or Tubi or whatever, and is like, "Hey, mm, probably not a good idea." Mm-hmm. At the same time, do you really think like the twelve dollars that MLW would have made from being on Tubi? Do you <laughs> think? Do you think anybody at Titan Towers is really losing any sleep over that? No, I mean, they again, just, they they're very vindictive. a million people. <laughs> they are very vindictive. They did, you know, sign a bunch of people that Vince McMahon personally hated because <laughs> they didn't want other people to sign them. Like, it's not as if they're above being vindictive, even against people that they don't or companies that they don't even consider to be anything resembling uh, competition or a threat. But it also, as you said, like it could have been something as simple as they heard about it and they go, nah, I don't think you should do that. And then they went, oh, well, if the industry leader says that they aren't a, a good fit for us, we're not going to do it. It's like it, like there's nothing. The point of this is obviously they're not they're not going to win anything. And this was just the latest attempt to get the names Major League, the name Major League Wrestling and MLW and Court Bauer into the the press cycle and hoping that like a bigger, you know, like variety or Hollywood reporter or someone would pick up the story so that you could plaster MLW's logo everywhere. Precisely. Precisely. All right. So until next time, everybody, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks
Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. I don't know why this pop- just popped into my head, but I remember uh, the Cheesecake Rumble, where uh, <laughs> I brought a... <laughs> I came over to your house and you bought the Royal Rumble pay-per-view and I had like $20 in my checking account and yet still went to uh Safeway and bought like two frozen uh, Sara Lee cheesecakes <laughs> where the idea is if every time that there's someone enters for the Rumble, you take a bite of cheesecake and every time if there's a uh, surprise entrant in the Rumble, you eat an entire slice of cheesecake. Anyway, so it was just, uh, it was just like four or five of us sitting there and uh, really, I think I'm the only one that really embraced the idea that she's <laughs> rumble. And so I ended up taking like, OK, great. I have nine dollars left in my checking account, but I also have one in three quarter cheesecakes that I can take <laughs> home to eat for the next week. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some, you know. <laughs> Tell you what, I don't know. I don't mean to generalize, uh, but Uh-oh. have you have you ever noticed? that no one loves dairy products like someone who's lactose intolerant. (laughs) One of my very best friends in the world is very lactose intolerant. I've never met a man who likes, who likes more dairy based products in my life than this guy who gets really gassy and, and itchy or whatever when he, right. (laughs) When he consumes it. Yeah. It gets an upset stomach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've they've really come a long way as far as like making the uh, the lactose uh, free stuff and uh, or the the little pills you can take before you mm-hmm. eat dairy. If but uh, my I I'm very very mildly can't tolerate dairy. It's not mm-hmm. to that level generally. Super fascinating stuff. <laughs> Anyway, I was trying to explain why I was coughing really loudly in your ear for ah. <laughs> 20 minutes. That's just part of the deal. Yeah, I saw JPL got scammed out of some crypto stuff. That's fun. Oh, he did? That's good. He was just tweeting. I guess it's like I guess it's like whatever that stock app is, but for crypto buying and selling. And ah. at Coinbase, you guys have no way to get a hold of you. I have been hacked and you won't help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy really right yeah especially you know crypto related that's just that's just it's always good it's always good when <laughs> when people who who do that stuff uh when it blows up on their face hey it's part of the risk right <laughs> yes and you are pretending something has theoretical value and trading real money for it that's you know, sometimes that doesn't work out, surprisingly. Yep. All right. <clears throat> 289. Where's the mute button in case I have to <laughs> drink a big jug of milk or something during the show? <laughs> Is there a milk-based energy product you should be considering? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, um... The, uh, I think uh, Monster or one of those makes like a protein <laughs> thing that has uh, milk and like, you know, 30 grams of protein and it has caffeine in it. It's like, find every possible way to kill me that there is. <laughs> they have alcohol, like uh, Four Loco or one of those. It would be Ooh. like the, the, the trifecta. I try to keep on keeping on.